All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Keep, Keep Your Hands, Hands Off Azekin, episode nine. All Keep right. going through this wonderful show. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it's gonna be over. Ew, oh, don't say that yet. It's <sighs> it's it's been it's been really exciting to watch them succeed. Yep. you know, overcome mm -hmm. struggles and stuff, but also now start to inspire other people and That's get right. them fired up about their passions. Mm -hmm. And now seeing Supermate's parents, yep, be involved in totally this way, just and... very positive and supportive. It's just, oh yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But now we gotta get another project. Yeah, like, we have to we have to figure out what the results of the festival will mean for mm -hmm. uh, their club, yep. and then uh, maybe what the sales were of all of their stuff, mm -hmm. and then we'll see. Uh, yeah, what makes sense flow wise to go into for the next thing. Right. Yeah. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. Stormy. Oh, cool. Wait. <gasps> oh. <clears throat> hmm. Ah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, drama first. Wow! Holy crap! Dang! Huh. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, turn down all of them. Exactly. They probably gave horrendous offers in terms of money. Yep, here we go. Okay. Alright. Ah, uh, so we need to make our own original thing. Jeez. The underappreciation of animators. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Wow, okay. Carbohydrate Revolution Society. Yeah. Okay. That's gotcha. That's a yeah. That's that's yeah. not happening with any of those. Yeah. <gasps> a contest. Ah. Yes. That's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's sell the hell out of some DVDs. Yep. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. <laughs> no. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Easy breezy, So what are they gonna make? If they're doing it for Easy Breezy for like a convention? I don't know. Cool. All these little nonsensical areas of the town that have history that shows there. <sighs> ah. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so where, where are they going? Headed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. What the heck? Okay. Oh, it's the fan. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah I see mm -hmm. yeah I, yeah wow fruit ramen I never would have expected that either Okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> like two old grandmas in the back, like, yeah, doing all that work. Ah, <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> really? Huh, it seems like they're setting up a couple things here, but yeah, I can't see what it's referring to. <laughs> wow. It isn't yeah. just a game. Nice, nice. Whoa. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Uh huh. Yes, very important. It's all a game. Uh huh. What? Oh my god, whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa! Ah, but then social media happened in it. Whoa, this is so cool! Yeah. Oh. Jeez. Wow, this is crazy! Yeah. What? That's that so was cool. that was a really good sequence. <laughs> Mini boy. Oh, so cute, so cute. It's why she's so economical. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, yeah, she was thinking yeah. about pensions. Uh huh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my god, I love it, god, it so yeah. much! Oh, yeah, oh. Wow. Okay, okay, good, it's just... Alright. Right, right. <laughs> wow. 
Whoa, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 あ、こういうのじゃなくて雪の染み込まない厚手のやつないかな。上からその Wow. This is so wow. wonderfully this is, wholesome. This is wonderful. Cute. And she's. <laughs> Look at this little. This is I love it. This, this... Oh. Yeah. Oh. お客さん来るのにお店やめるの。お店を続けていくのにもお金が必要なんだよ。光熱費壊れたものの修理代に税金にとけ。いや、店の商品を買うお金に輸送費いろんなお金を全部払って最後に残るお金で生活するんだ。
She just keeps going. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> あの時機内を真っ暗に書いたのは。あは。空の明るさと広さを見せたかったからじゃない。いや、exactly。今までのありとあらゆることは演出だった。いや。ずっとやっていたんだ。ああ。ああ。Yes。俺もそのスバラシ
And she's sure. like, no, 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 I just yeah. did that, you know, because you've been doing such a great job and doing uh-huh. all sexual work. She's like, I'll go sweep a little bit more. It's right, like, right. Oh, you did, yeah, don't yeah. have to like, do that. It's just, <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. And then the fact that we got to see something that I really appreciated with characters that have seemingly high intellect mm-hmm. is that they can still be bad at a school subject that people typically associate with those with high intellect. Mm-hmm. Math has very clear tiers of levels of, of capability and competence. Sure. Basic arithmetic, you don't have to be that smart in order to understand how to do mm-hmm. arithmetic. And that's basically what you need for business. That like, is that is the majority of what you need for business. Maybe are, not at the super high level, but Right. There are some there are some maybe some complex story problems, basically. But if you are able yeah. to boil everything down to the numbers mm-hmm. and then, you know, just know where the numbers go with regards to that, it then goes it entirely away from the math side of things to just the pure business savvy of it. Right. And that's the part that Kanamori just has. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be primarily with regards to that little bit of passion. She likes this. Oh she yeah, she enjoys yeah. this. That that smirk that she got when they gave her the stuff, and they were like, "You can totally, you know, like right. make make good money off of this, make a just, killing off of this." Yeah, and yeah. She goes, "Hee hee." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that's oh man, I oh, it's just it's just wonderful. Yeah. I I so want to be that kind of grown up that encourages that kind of you know like like you know behavior and just and just fostering the talents you know of, of yeah. you know, kids like that because because yeah like that's. Like, ah. like, regardless of whatever it is, when you have exactly. the opportunity to mm-hmm. bolster someone else's passion in something like that, it's just, it's just, because oh, it, right, it's and wonderful. It, and I think the reason why why my heart really goes out in this situation is because there are the passions that are a lot more commonly encouraged, right? Ah, sure. You know, and they're music, more... Music, Yeah, music, sports. art, sports, things like it's that. usually right? a competitive thing. Usually competitive things in... Business can be competitive. Business but, can be competitive, but it's usually more competitive with yourself, really, than it is. Sure, and yeah, and it and it's something where oftentimes I feel like if it's one of those sort of boring passions that you wouldn't expect a kid accounting. to accounting. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't expect a kid to be passionate about accounting, right? Right. So it's not exactly the kind of thing you would necessarily help foster and develop within yeah, them. Exactly. Even if they show an interest in it, right, right, right. and and. So, so the fact that that happened here, that was just, that was so awesome. Ugh. And the fact that it was in like that very like painted style and everything for how yeah. it was portrayed. I loved it. And mm. when it, when it happens, even though you know that like Kanamori says, I once saw a, a liquor store disappear before my very eyes. Right. Yeah. And then, and then it happens and they're like, oh no, we're closing next month. And the amount of time that it just spent with Kanamori just being like. Reeling from it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Oh. oh. Yeah, oh. like we have some friends of ours that are that couple where they're basically the mm-hmm. one's good at business, the other's good at math. It's not saying one's bad at the other right. versus that, but it's the very clear thing. If you were to look at them, it's the, ah, yeah, okay, cool. You guys mm-hmm. fit both both halves of the coin there of, of the whole running a place kind of angle. Exactly. And and it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And, and we recently saw them to sell the sell the place off. Yeah, and it was they kind retired, of a thing yeah. where it's like, oh. Okay. Right, and that was hopefully you'll still be there for for that thing and stuff like right, that. Right, like that was an emotional thing, yeah. but I can only imagine what it would be like if it's like no, 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 we're going out of business. Yeah, and and because like I love that place, and yeah, I, I'm, I know I can speak for you. Yeah, yeah, you do too, right? Love that place, yeah. It was like it was like a second home almost. Like yeah. it's like oh yeah, this this place is great. The yeah. idea that you could have a place like that and then it's oh no, the just the the cold reality you know yeah the money's not coming in so right there you go like the issues that they brought up in this are things that this place kind of had a nice buffer against it was like a perfect location Uh as far as things go and then a lot of the issues that i thought they were going to bring up they didn't actually bring up which was more the issue of ownership regarding land and then the actual building itself so it seems like they actually own all that so they're not dealing with rent as the primary problem which is more of a thing I would say where where we live, where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I've yeah. seen like mechanic buddies of mine where it's like, oh, you're you're done? Yeah, I'm no longer gonna be a mechanic. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can't find a good location with the upping costs of rents with regards to like yeah. you know, zoning and things like that. I'm like, that's 
that's rough. Like you don't want to try a home business. And they'd like laugh at me. Like, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? Like no one would, I would get no business. I'd yeah. get no business at all. It's not worth it. Like, I've been wow. in, I've been in department stores, big department stores, right? You know, mm -hmm. where, where, and, and it's not like they're selling cheap stuff there. Right. Uh -huh. But, and, and I've seen like, this was, this just happened recently. And apparently I guess the owner was there. Right. Oh yeah. And they, you could tell that they were so desperate for a sale, for a sale yeah. because you know, big space to hold all the, all the, the stock basically. Yep. And you know, and I was like, yeah, this, you probably have to sell, you know, quite a few of these just every month just to, you know, like make the rent. And there was like this nervous laughter of like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, business is business is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. But we have Kanamori's backstory in conjunction with this idea of the little invisible things that kind of are the glue that hold all of this together. Mm -hmm. They tie that in with the advertising. Yep. They tie that in with the ramen. They mm -hmm. tie that in with the visual narrative tools, visual storytelling, stuff like that. And they tie it in a little bit with just who Kanamori is. Mm -hmm. as a character that is the glue holding all this together because you know you're gonna mock the social media guru here bringing in the bucks right. for you guys yep. here yep. Uh -huh. you're taking it easy social media then i'll have you know yep that's right it's not an easy game y'all i have seen so many not. people who are like in this whole social media thing and stuff mm -hmm. like that they're like i don't know how to do it uh-huh and i don't have the money to hire someone to do it Right. Like I've seen entire like like properties and stuff explode <laughs> just because they had someone that knew how to do social media really uh -huh. well. Oh yeah. Like oh, it, yeah. it's such a crazy thing we live in right now where like someone who knows how to work a social media program really well can and just yeah. yeah, not just set up their life with regards to, you know, a job and a company or something like that, but everyone then associated with that gets, you know, lifted mm -hmm. up by the whole uh, you know, efforts of that, that person. So that's, that's pretty yep. crazy too. But, uh, the visual storytelling stuff, that was, yeah. I that like was a really that. cool thing to focus on at the end there. Right. Because I, I didn't expect that to be something that would be sort of like an angle for Asakusa's development. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it totally makes sense. Right. Cause she's right. super invested in the, the visuals of everything and the details, right? Mm -hmm. The story that it tells, right? Right. Yeah. That was the whole point with her obsession with the town and all the different, you know, ins and outs of the place and, and how it looked, right? Because right. it was what's the reason behind it. Right. And and while Asakusa often would go backwards, right, you know, <laughs> of we need this because of this. Right. Now I feel like she's seeing where it's the ah, if I use it, if I do it in that way, I can move forward with it. Where I do right. one thing to push out something rather than reading, right. like figuring out something in the past. Exactly. What it is, is it's more goal oriented. Mm -hmm. She shifted her focus to be, I need to communicate really well that this turret thing, this tank turret thing, fires a non-visual laser. Right. How do I do that? Uh -huh. Bring in all the things like the emptying yeah. of the canister, the right. smoke, yep. the sounds, uh -huh. the way it moves, the camera angles, yeah, all the of heat that coming out of the the yeah the radiator the, the, the or whatever. Smoke. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The that whole thing there is basically to communicate the thing that we're not going to use exposition for. Right. And this is this is I would say the the if you get this as a storyteller especially if you're in a visual medium like anime, mm -hmm. this is it. Like, this is the foundation. This is the building yeah. blocks upon which you can then make any story possible. And this is why I would say anime is so just bloody amazing as a, uh -huh. as a, as a freaking medium, is that there is so much stuff you have to jump through, hoops-wise, in a non-visual medium in order to communicate the thing that people are supposed to absorb subconsciously. Right. But because then people are getting extra stimuli mm -hmm. via their eyes yep. and their ears in this case as well, you can combine them to have people just accepting things mm -hmm. immediately that took you hours and days oh, yeah. and weeks to come up with the way in which you would best communicate that. Right. And, and you, by being an audiovisual consumer, you can also check to see if it works for you. Do you understand it? Sure. 
And oh, and by the way, this isn't like with live action where then whatever the best opportunity is has to be filtered through what can we actually do. Right. Like there still is that because you need to draw it and everything. And that's a cost that they became very familiar with in this episode. Yep. With how much it would, you know, how many they would, how much money they would have to bring in just to make 10 bucks an hour off of that project. Yeah. But you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Like, there you go. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like how in uh, basically every anime that you've watched, if you've watched like a good good chunk of them, there's going to be some kind of a visual gag of sorts that's on the character models specifically to showcase some aspect of their emotions. And it's a quicker way mm-hmm. than to show them transitioning their facial expression from a happy one into a depressed one where you show the black lines and the shadows and it goes Uh purple for a second they go dum you know the the sound effect the little thing pop out of their head for the vein or whatever yeah yeah exactly all that stuff is to basically communicate rather quickly what's going on in a visual way without you having to say uh i am really in despair right now Uh uh-huh right yeah my my emotions are so turbulent that i am now filled with rage and frustration nope just you know yep. just there you go you're done right. yeah exactly and Rick it is dirty. and it is an audio visual combination almost mm-hmm. every single time i i love that so much because in some ways mm-hmm. i would say it is a shortcut for communicating to the audience what you need them to understand yeah but it is done in just enough of a way that it doesn't feel like you're condescending to the audience it feels like you're being efficient with them right yeah there was uh, I was recently watching the masterclass for um, uh, Neil Gaiman. Oh, and, storytelling? Yeah, for storytelling. Right, and he yeah. was talking about short stories and that he was saying he was like that a lot of the times, you know, he feels like people would look down on like the, the shorter stories because everyone wants to be, you know, Tolkien or whatever and build this massive thing. Yep. But that he saw the people that could make those those short stories right. and, and have them be impactful, yep. that it was like. It was like short form magic, right? You know, where it's not some massive stage display or whatever, but it's just, I'm going to make a rose appear in my hand. You know, how did I do that? You know, and you can just be like, how how did you do that? Before you even have time to analyze, he's doing another one. Right. Exactly. 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 Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. So, I... (sighs) Yeah, I love anime. I love anime too. And this anime makes you fall in love with anime even more, but I think it really makes you fall in love with the people that also fall in love with anime. I know a Mm. couple people who have this language barrier with me where they want to talk certain elements of the visuals. And this doesn't give me a translator. This doesn't give Mm -hmm. me the automatic kind of in to know exactly how they're speaking or talking regarding this. But now I can at least have an idea of where that passion is coming from. Mm -hmm. Because when they don't get interested in the story, I don't have to turn off necessarily and be like, oh, well, you're not doing this for the story. Well, then. Right. No, 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 no. There's stories going on behind the scenes of how they brought you to the last thing, which is the, you know, the actual plot character story and all that. In this case, they got a foundation that's built upon that. And yep. That vehicle is something kind of like a video game in some ways where you have like an open world kind of system. And once they've got the system and they've got the, you know, X, Y, Z coordinates and Uh stuff all set up, it's like, all right, now, now let's fill it. Let's fill it with stuff. That was, that was one of the things that blew me away from this episode because it's, it's so different in the way I think about these kinds of things. And it makes sense Mm -hmm. because this is, these are animators making a story. So they'll start with, all right, what do we want the visuals to be? And and things like that. What kind of story does that tell? And then let's Uh fill in the blanks. Right. Yeah. But the idea of just being like, oh yeah. This, uh, this town looks really cool. And we've all been, you know, the person where we imagine, we, you know, just pattern recognize things that we see in, in the physical world and then match it to some an animal or, thing or, or an whatever, animal or, yeah. you know, or, yeah, the telephone poles or missile launchers, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> and, hey, why not just make an anime where that's the case? Yeah, why yeah. not? Why not? Yeah. Right? Because you can. Yeah. So, and then there you go. Why would uh-huh. they, why would they have a bunch of weapons everywhere? Well, aliens are attacking. Right. All right. Cool. Aliens versus the town. I totally. love it. I love it. It's yeah, great. Let's get trigger on this. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait for them to start their Patreon. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is a modern thing and stuff like that where they just frankly just bring Adam up Twitter. Just like, oh, hey. like, you know, I think actually what would be really cool is to find a way 
to give our super fans oh an opportunity God. to really get invested in our project mm-hmm. and get a behind the scenes look on things in a way that is feasible for us to do, yes. but in a way that we can get some consistent financial support regarding. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, um, man. Uh, really got to shout out because I don't fully understand it. Mm-hmm. The point where they tried to simulate 3D. I don't know if it was actually 3D though. But it was amazing. But it was so freaking It was cool. amazing. Like one of the things that really blew me away about how the images moved and everything is that because the images were so clearly painted, right? Uh-huh. You could see the little discrepancies and imperfections and things like that yeah. that gave the images character, right? Uh-huh. The, the white outlines and stuff that were irregular, you know, right. those kinds of things. Yeah. But as it moved, those parts stayed consistent. Well, like yeah, not all the time though. They did warp a little bit. Right, right. Well, but that. But that's why I think it wasn't exactly. That's not like the image as a whole was warping, rather than like components of the image. Like, like if you had like a like a red box and like there's a white bit in the corner here. Yeah. That white bit in the corner stayed that same white bit. Right. Like I, I am really curious how they put this together, and that's just more of a them being like yeah uh isn't animation awesome you can yeah. do things like this aren't you curious about you know how we did that yeah, and all just that pulled stuff? off a magic trick right for we those of you that don't trick. know how this kind of stuff works yep yep might as well be right uh-huh yeah i, I love it so i love it I, uh, <sighs> yeah i wanted to bring up the whole ramen thing as well oh the ramen thing i was initially being like oh, what is this yeah, and then the them point? doing yeah. the whole thing of setting up the whole thing with the place um what was it like the place uh, having some kind of stuff with summer being? Oh yeah, that in winter time because the snow gets so crazy up top, people come underground and all that. Oh, is that more of a setup for the whole thing of what Kanamori was bringing up? Uh, they said it's getting lonely. It's getting lonelier around here. Apparently, Yoshida's place is closed too this summer. Oh, could that be more of something you know related to? Uh, just gotcha. how they eventually end up, you know, talking about Kanamori's place and stuff like Maybe, that. Yeah, Maybe, yeah, sort of foreshadowing that with the, hey, businesses need to stay in business. Yeah. The ramen thing, though, I was initially like, okay, so cool. This is Kanamori being like, hey, let's get some ramen. Let's yep. have a good time. Mm-hmm. This is cool. There's a, you know, three birds, one stone kind of thing going on here. And right. Like, you know, she's very much wanting to talk to this guy in order to get him kind mm-hmm. of in on the project with them as long as they can, yeah. you know, utilize his passion for this. Um but they're not necessarily going to utilize his story ideas. No. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe parts of it. Answer in a diplomatic fashion so that that way they aren't hurt and then just decide on something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but the bit about how if you have the flavor of the fruit be too kind of overpowering, mm-hmm. it can ruin the ramen. Which, right. yeah, it's interesting because fruit ramen does not sound good to me. No. I, I don't like the idea of fruit with my noodles. Right. Especially with my salty broth. Like, exactly. Which they what? said there wasn't really much at all because of the way it's tilted. But mm-hmm. but then still, it, you'd have to have some stuff in there. So I'm I'm curious yeah. about that. But the the idea of it being something that if you have it be in the background, if you have it be subtle, Mm -hmm. then it adds to the overall experience. I feel like that was them kind of saying or setting up just Asaka said to realize, oh, wait, something that is important and integral to the dish to work doesn't have to be bam up there in your face. It can be hiding in the background. It can Mm -hmm. be subtle. It can be something that you don't intentionally draw specific attention to this is kind of the same thing about why you know misaki is so obsessed with getting that little bit of extra perfect right. detail in the animation yeah. it's like no 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 no, no that shit's we're, gonna be blown showing up this to normal people right and normal people are not gonna notice any of this stuff mm-hmm. so this is more for you but still there are things that you can do that can basically do stuff in the background right. that aren't there for you that will then help all the other people just accept the stuff so that they don't feel like they have to go in-depth looking. This was something that in some other anime that we've been watching recently where there's a lot of exposition, there's a lot of things being told to us about it. Mm -hmm. But then when we see um, something that's been kind of shown as a visual get referenced again in a future thing without any context, but it's slightly altered, it makes us fill in the blanks in our heads and go right wait a minute we've seen this before but not in this context so then we start asking questions but 
it's not in the way of questioning whether or not it should be there. It's getting us excited about the eventual right. explanation. Given that it's supposed to be there and it's slightly different than what we're familiar with, yeah. this must be the connecting of the dots or, or something like that. You know? Right, right. I guess what it does primarily is the visual storytelling, if it's done well, either covers entirely for exposition like you don't even need it potentially that that's yeah. that's insanely good or what it does is it preps you for the exposition right or yes. it allows you to hyphenate like not hyphenate um uh underline or highlight hi highlight or i would say shorten the exposition right condense it a little bit because yeah it supplements right the question was already being asked to you Right. And so, then mm -hmm. when the words came in, it just basically answered yeah. it before you had to ask it right. yourself. One of my favorite things to happen with exposition and one of my least favorite things to happen with exposition is when the exposition is either uh, not wanted or is specifically desired, right? Oh, okay. and, and and that can be like crafted, I feel like, with things like the that's visual storytelling. A little it, bit. it is subjective, but you can do things with the visual storytelling to give like the audience that idea of, oh, okay. I get the feeling it's something similar to this, but I'm not quite sure. It'd be great if I knew, oh, hey, exposition, you Immediately know. Immediately tells right. you. Versus the, all right, we're going to expose it to you about something that you don't know or care about yet, you know. Or, or this is the other pretty, like, like really, like, I would say tough thing with regards to visual storytelling is Asakusa could have five elements or what have you for the laser and the, the invisible laser, basically. Mm -hmm. But if then the character immediately goes wow it's crazy that something so invisible can create such a massive explosion like if one of the characters said that you just kind of be like that doesn't seem like something that character would say necessarily. Doesn't feel like that person would say but is this person saying this we don't maybe they maybe they uh -huh. would say this but are they saying this specifically to just make uh -huh. sure that the visual storytelling yeah, did so the, its job? Right, so the audience isn't like, did they forget to put in the, the, the laser, you know? or Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think that this is the part that makes it subjective, but also something that uh, is, is something maybe more revealing that you don't necessarily need this kind of exposition all the time, is that when that visual storytelling stuff happens and you give a lot of specific instances for it, maybe, maybe one of the best things to then do for it is instead of specifically reiterating what the visual storytelling gave you, is have the characters then basically give some kind of notion or kind of pointing towards it as being there in their dialogue to show that they don't need to explain it to the audience, they're acting as if they already know the thing that you just got visual mm. storytelling on. Gotcha. So then you go, are they referring to the the visual cues we just got earlier? Uh huh. Oh, okay. And then that you know basically right. solves all the all the potential hiccups there. But uh, yeah, really good episode. Kanamori yep. stuff was wholesome. I'm really glad we got that yeah. backstory. That was that was wonderful. Uh, some some stuff with the audio. Yeah, stuff, yeah. So student council. One of the things that I I'm really glad that this show is bringing up is that in in the production of anime, right, mm -hmm. there can be hiccups along the way, right. right? And because their their project is getting bigger and bigger, uh -huh. there is more and more opportunities for things to go wrong, right? Sure. So in the case of say, yeah, the rent you know that they were getting from their audio you know guru right. is now going towards going to the student council because they found out about it okay well that's that's a problem now yeah. the solution came you know sort of hand in hand in the within the episode of hey the town itself is wanting to fund this project yeah the department that, of commerce and whatever club right. or something I don't like, even know if it was a club, but yeah, yeah, I think it was. I was going to school. entirely fund the whole thing. Yeah. That's a big deal. That's a great. That's a big, big deal. deal. Yeah, but but it's that it's the positives and the negatives, right? Yeah. And and that rolling with the punches that I really want to see from this, and I'm glad that they have it here because it makes this whole project feel real. You know, yeah. it's it's not just a a seamless. Oh yeah, whatever, everything's perfect. You know, right. there's there's complications. Yeah. And those are invisible things Kanamori is taking up in the background. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So good stuff. 
Love these girls, love this show. And y'all, if you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general. And you can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. Yes, I wrote a sci-fi novel called Battle Lines. It's on Amazon. Link's in the description. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.